Here is an introduction to the JIT.mo package. Let's walk through some of the functionality. We're going to start with the JIT.world. All of the JIT.mo functionality points back to the world for the animation. To set things up, let's make a JIT.gl grid shape. This gives us a sphere in our scene. Next, let's make a JIT.gl moldable object. We're going to give it two parameters with an addGLParams attribute. We'll give it a position and a scale. Connect the patch cord to the grid shape. Now let's add a JIT.matrix with three planes, float 32, and a dimension of 100. Connect the patch cord to the scale input of the GL multiples. Now we need to connect a floating point number box to the matrix to control the scale amount. We actually have 100 spheres here, but you can't tell at the moment because they're all in the same position. Now we need to make a jit.mo.join object. Like a matrix, it needs some settings. We're going to give it three planes and a dimension of 100. You will find that the jit.mo.join is a central hub for joining jitmo func objects. Make a jitmo func and connect it to the jitmo join. Now make a jit.p window and connect a patch cord from the jitmo func so we can visualize our output. For getting started, we want to make four main attributes. These are function, frequency, speed, and scale. Now let's change function to sine. Increase the frequency and speed to see the effect we're creating. Scale allows us to control the sizing. And another useful attribute is also offset. At the moment, we're running into the X axis. Duplicate this whole JITMO func and connect it to the second inlet of JITMO join to modulate our Y axis. Make sure the function type is set to sign. Now we have this moving across our Y axis. Let's add another JITMO func to the second inlet to do some additive blending. Let's change this function to a saw. We can also change the speed of the saw so that it is moving as well. Now in addition to our sine wave that goes across, we have a repeated ramp section. Now we can copy this whole section again to put it into the Z axis, the third inlet of jit.mo.join. This will give us additional depth. Let's make this function type for the Z axis to be Perlin noise for some nice random qualities. Let's add another object here, jitmo field. Patch it between the mo join and the GL multiples. What this does is create a transparent space in our scene where our objects can interact, react, and be pushed and pulled away from it. It's like a variable force field depending on our settings. Let's play with the force attribute. You'll see everything close to the center get blown outwards, and as they get closer to the center, they will get pushed further. There's also settings for size and fall off. These add more interesting movement. Play around with all of these until you get something you like. Another favorite of mine is the random amount adder for the X, Y, and Z axis. I want to introduce one last object, JITMO time. Make a JITMO time object. Make an attribute for mode. 
By default, it uses an accumulative mode, which is clock running time. This can be reset at any moment and is separate to frame rate. It's very useful for keeping track of time. We also have a delta, which is time between frames and is useful for particle systems. The other option is function, which gives you a floating point number between minus one and one and lets you set a shape for that number to move through. The same functions as Jitmo Func. Let's make a message box with force dollar sign one. Connect the outgoing time to the message box and the message box to the Mo field to modulate the force of our field. Now changing the speed attribute of Mo time, we can LFO modulate our force field. Similar to Mo field, you can also change the offset and scale of Mo.time. That wraps up our introduction of JIT.mo. Be sure to check out part two shortly. Happy patching.